Hey everybody, if the plug-in outlet in your stove has become loose, appears burnt, or works intermittently, then it might be time for a replacement. Quite often these things wear out from repeated use, so let me show you step by step how I replaced mine. Once we get going, I'll be moving quickly, but I'll try to include plenty of detail. If you're here because your outlet shut off completely, it is possible that either the protective fuse has blown or needs to be replaced or the circuit breaker, if so equipped, is tripped and simply needs to be reset. If all is good, then we'll continue. Now surprisingly to me, not one building supply store that I found, big or small, could provide me with this outlet. And my appliance repair store said it had to be ordered. And even trying to find this online was a bit tricky. But using the following search, I had luck. On the Google search page, I searched panel mounting AC power socket outlet 125V15A. As you can see, plenty of results, but interestingly, none that are of the color of our original white outlet. I ordered another three-pronged version and received it in the mail. In this video, I'll show the replacement plug, some electrical tape, a screwdriver, side cutters, small pliers, a marker, crimpers, and a multimeter that measures AC volts. My screwdriver is a number two Robertson square drive for the screws on the back of my stove, but many stoves instead use the number two Phillips. I also have replacement spade connectors to connect my new outlet to the old wires. I'll use the blue ones here that are rated 14 gauge. So for my electric stove, the first step is to carefully pull it away from the wall. Then, carefully disconnect the large power supply plug from the wall. If the stove cannot be unplugged because it's hardwired to the home, then the main breaker for the stove at the main power panel must be switched off instead. Next, to gain access to what we want to replace, we'll need to remove the screws from the steel covers on the back of the stove. Each stove, including yours, will be slightly different. For example, on my dad's stove, only the shield needed to be removed. But for this one, the screws need to be removed and the entire top assembly needs to be tilted and laid down like this. By the way, use a towel to protect the front controls from scratches if you do this. Now you can see the wires. There's a green wire, a white wire, a black supply wire, which comes directly from its dedicated protective fuse holder that has the same 15 amp fuse I showed you earlier. This configuration is the standardized configuration for North America. When looking at an outlet like this, this small hole is protective ground, the largest flat blade is neutral, and the smaller flat blade is 125 volt supply power. These must never be connected any other way. To remove this outlet, I'm disconnecting the neutral, the supply wire from the fuse holder, and then with a screwdriver, I'll undo the screw holding the eyelet for the ground wire. Now the new and old outlets are held into the stove with a simple method which is using a spreading tang on each side. To remove the outlet, I just need to squeeze both tangs in simultaneously while pulling evenly on the socket in an outward direction like this. Next, I'll look to make sure there is no damage to the wires. After, I'll proceed to cut all wires off at the old connector. Then I'll mark off a line one quarter inch from the end of each wire where I want to strip the insulation off the wires. Always be careful not to cut the copper strands when stripping, as this will weaken the connection and cause a heat buildup when it's under a heavy electrical load. Then I'll firmly grip the wires onto the spade connectors Now before sliding the female spade connectors onto the new socket terminals, I always like to give each connector a slight squeeze on both sides, like this with a set of pliers to ensure the tightest fit possible on each socket terminal. And as protection, give a few turns of electrical tape to each of the terminals. Next, the wires must be slid all the way, firmly back onto the new connector. That's it. Now slide the new connector into the old hole and it should lock in place. 
and then continue to reverse the order of operations to put this thing back together. At this point, I like to verify one last time the connections are proper. So I will measure looking for approximately 120 volts from the smaller flat blade to ground, and also 120 volts from the same smaller flat blade to the larger flat blade. So there you go. If any part of this video helped you, please share it. And remember to check out my channel. As always, thanks for watching.